Bitcoin, I want to show you guys this. This is that channel from yesterday. Um, I, I, I adapted it slightly, but just notice that we're still stuck in this channel here. Look at this, and then look at low end, low end, low end, low end, and then we tagged it here. What I find fascinating is this, and I'm going to throw this out to you guys. Every time we hit this low end of this, we're getting these buy, some, someone's coming in and buying. And I'm not going to pretend to know who it is, but it, it is interesting because yesterday we were hammering on this level and all of a sudden we got this huge pop, well, relatively huge pop in Bitcoin. And now Bitcoin's kind of gone back in the middle of this channel. But again, my point remains as of yesterday as well. If we break below this, that's trouble. As long as we stay in this, you stay bullish on Bitcoin in the near term. If this level breaks, which again is just below 35,000, that's where trouble can ensue. Bitcoin has been on fire, and it's all about the potential approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs by the SEC. First things first, Bitcoin smashed through the $36,400 level. Analysts are seeing this as a huge green light for the BTC bull market. It's like hearing the starting gun in a race. Things are heating up. And the big news is that the SEC might give the thumbs up to these ETS. That's like the regulator saying, go for it, folks. Here's the scoop, a grayscale victory in court paved the way. Now the odds of the SEC approving these ETFs are looking pretty darn good. But hold on to your hats because there's an eight-day window of opportunity between November 9 and 17 when the SEC might just give the green light for all those spot Bitcoin ETFs. You see, the crypto gurus are predicting some big numbers for Bitcoin if this all pans out. We're talking about $49,000. Yes, you heard that right. Some folks believe Bitcoin's heading for the stars. But that's not all. Oh no, there are high-profile peeps out there saying Bitcoin could soar even higher. Max Kayser thinks $200,000 is within reach, especially if things get a little wild out there in the world. And Michael Saylor is even more bullish, thinking Bitcoin could be worth over $350,000. So get ready, folks. We're in for an exciting Bitcoin journey and this rocket ship is just getting started. The road to riches might be paved with Bitcoin. Let's continue our discussion with Gareth. We're going to step over to this, this projector here, this computer screen. I'm going to look at the 10-year yield. Before we get into that, I want to say this. At 9.15 a.m. today, that's 15 minutes from the start of this broadcast, Jerome Powell is speaking. All right, I don't know what he's going to necessarily say. It's just a random speech. But ultimately, I'm curious to watch, and we'll watch the S&P live to see if there's a reaction to what his comments say. Maybe there'll be a great trading opportunity right like that at that point. Okay, so basically, we have the 10-year yield sitting right on top of technical support right here. What I'm going to do today, so we talked about this yesterday, so I'm not going to go into this today. There's not a lot of changes, but what I wanted to do was do something different today. Let's look at the bigger time frame. So what I want to do here, guys, we're going to flip over to the monthly chart. Now, when we flip over to the monthly chart, we can clearly see that this was your decline from essentially COVID down to the lows when COVID hit. And then eventually we saw the reversal back up and you can see that pattern kind of like a cup pattern, a little bit of a handle right here for that secondary move to the upside. But let's go out even more. Let's zoom out even more. If we zoom out here, let's look at where rates have been. And basically what this is, is this is going all the way back to basically 1980 when the rates were literally 16%. So those of us that might be a little bit younger, maybe if you're, you know, sub 40 years old, you weren't alive when rates were up to 16%, but it does put it in perspective when rates are back to 4.5 to 5% where they are historically. The problem is this, people get used to borrowing money at certain rates. They basically have more money in their pocket when rates are low, and so when rates go up, it puts hardship on people, even if historically it's not necessarily where rates have been. People essentially adapted to rates down here and were spending as such. They got their kind of means larger and larger, and therefore it is a hardship, even moving rates back to 5%. Now, interestingly enough, what I want to do now, we're going to erase this trend line right here, and we're going to just draw some other trend lines on the chart. So what I want to do, guys, is... As we bring this into focus, I want to take a trend line and I want to extend it down here. And I want to show you how charts even work with the 10-year yield, all right? So there's your trend line. And this trend line goes back to 1994. But what I want to show you on this is amazingly 
how you literally had a trend line here to here to here and right to here and how when it got to that level, we saw rates get pushed down and pushed down. And look at what happened here. We saw rates dumping out during COVID and during that just post-COVID period. And then look at the move up and the breakout. And this has been a breakout in rates. Now, one of the things to remember is most people are expecting the Fed to cut rates over the next year or so. I think the first rate hike is projected now somewhere in May of 2024. Now, interestingly enough, is it possible for rates to come back? The answer is yes. But what we know on the chart is that your max downside is probably right around 2% on the Fed funds rate. Now, that's still a lot of cutting. So we could be in a very dramatic recession if rates go back to that level. But on a technical basis, that level now becomes support. And as we can see, this trend line has worked beautifully. So what's to say it won't work again? And meaning rates will bottom out at 4%. Now, let's extrapolate that thought process. Does that mean that the economy is doing great? Or my bigger concern is that if rates come back here, what do you think ha is going to happen to inflation? If money printing and, and free money or low interest money is out there, inflation's going to come back up. That's going to eventually cause the, infl uh, the rates to have to go dramatically higher. And again, you have to wonder if we're repeating what happened in the 1970s. In the 1970s, we had inflation go like this, then it came down sharply, and you know what happened? The, the, the Federal Reserve back then started to lower interest rates too quickly, and inflation ended up going up and making a new high before rolling down like this. And so you have to wonder if this is telling us exactly that, right? Let's think about that. Doesn't this potentially pretend... Uh, to essentially be that same sort of thing, where we have this scenario where we're going to see rates come in, but then have to go up because inflation is going to go up like that. And that's very interesting on the charts to take a look at. Okay, let's look at the US dollar. I'm going to do the same thing. Dollar's bouncing a little bit today. I'm still waiting for the Jerome Powell to give his speech today. I will keep you posted on that. As soon as I see any price movement, we're going to get into earnings this morning. We have some good stocks making moves, so we'll go into levels on that. But again, same kind of deal here. What I want to do is I want to flip out to the larger time frame on the dollar and kind of dispel some narratives, right? So again, the narrative has been that, hey, listen, there is de-dollarization going on and the dollar is collapsing down or will essentially just keep going down. And when you look at this chart, you really don't see that in a shorter term basis, maybe over a really long period. But again, if you look at this, in 1998 to 2000, the dollar was right here. And look at where we just got to on the US dollar about a year ago or so. We basically are at the same level we were 20 plus years ago in terms of the dollar. Now, I will say this, is if you look at the longer trend line, you do see that you are making a high, lower high, and a basically an equal high, maybe slightly lower high. So I think over the longer term, the dollar does continue to weaken. My guess is eventually the dollar comes down like this, makes a lower high and goes like this. But remember that this isn't something like if you go on crypto Twitter, right? Or if you go on Twitter, if I need FinTwit, all that kind of stuff, you would think that the de-dollarization is going to make the dollar go from where it currently is to zero, like right here, right? To, to literally zero in a month or in a year. That's not going to happen, folks. These type of maneuvers where, where currencies kind of lose their, their reserve currency status and depreciate, it takes really long periods of time. So do I think that slowly that's going to happen? The answer is yes. And in fact, it probably speeds up a little bit from here because of the amount of debt the U.S. has. But it's still going to take decades. It is still going to take decades. And you have to understand that aspect. United States Deputy Secretary of the Treasury Wally Adeyemo says the Biden administration is seeking more tools to combat the illicit use of crypto. We're going to work with Congress to get more tools, he stressed, advising the crypto industry to make sure that you're protecting yourselves from being in a position where people are using your assets to further their either heinous acts, like what Hamas did, or digital criminals. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's former head of internet enforcement has predicted a big win for the SEC in the lawsuit involving Terraform Labs. The ex-SEC official also expects District Judge Jed Rakoff to keep rejecting the ruling by District Judge Annalisa Torres regarding Ripple and XRP.
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.